Jeffrey Epstein, who's now known as an infamous predator and convicted criminal, had managed to build quite the real estate portfolio. I'll start off by saying I know how controversial he is, but it's undeniable that the man was absolutely loaded. In addition to his own private island in the Virgin Islands, Epstein had previously owned top of the line homes in New York, Florida, New Mexico, and France. Some of his properties he owned around the world were absolutely nuts, including a $12 million villa in Palm Beach, an apartment in Paris, France, and a 10,000 acre ranch in Stanley, New Mexico with a sprawling hilltop mansion. Not to mention, his New York estate was once described as the largest private residence in Manhattan. Stay tuned because this is going to be a pretty crazy house tour. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. As much of a monster Jeffrey Epstein was, nobody can deny that the man was made of money. Epstein's personal fortune was estimated to be at least 500 million dollars. However, his net worth could have been as high as one million dollars, depending on the value of his real estate portfolio and bank accounts. On August 8th, 2019, two days before he committed suicide, Jeffrey signed a will that laid out a net worth totaling at least 577 million dollars. The will listed his next of kin, brother Mark Epstein, as his heir. His listed assets included 56 million dollars in cash, 113 million dollars in equities, 14 million dollars in bonds, 195 million dollars invested with hedge funds and six properties worth a combined 178 million. When he totaled everything up, Jeffrey Epstein estimated his net worth to be over 577 million and that number could have been even higher because it doesn't include assets put into trust. Epstein reportedly earned 100 million dollars per year at the peak of his power. He also had power of attorney to do whatever he thought was necessary to help the client's finances. Amazingly, Epstein would decline clients who had less than 1 billion and his firm reportedly managed more than 15 billion dollars at one time. Being this successful, Epstein owned lavish properties all around the world, including a 12 million dollar villa in Palm Beach, a private island in the Caribbean called Little St. James Island, an apartment in Paris, a ranch in Stanley, New Mexico, and a New York City mansion. This mansion was a 50,000 square foot, nine story abode that is worth at least 77 million dollars. In fact, shortly after his death, his Palm Beach home which was demolished in his New York mansion went on the market for a combined 110 million dollars. Hey guys, it's Karen. Today we're bringing you another house tour here on Famous Entertainment. If you like this video, which I know you will, be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell for notifications. We post a new video daily. Today we're taking a look at where the late Jeffrey Epstein called home before everyone found out how corrupt he actually was. This includes his massive properties everywhere from New Mexico to New York City and the man was living lavish like you wouldn't believe. As you know, here we talk about celebrity houses, but have you ever wondered about Justin Bieber's new whip or the outfits on the hottest celebrities right now like Elizabeth Olsen? We recently started a brand new channel, Famous Fashion, where myself and some other hosts are reporting on all things celebrity fashion and purchases. I'm going to tell you everything we know about it and why on earth you would want to spend so much on something so seemingly strange. Wouldn't a diamond in the forehead feel weird? Who knows? Join us and be sure to subscribe. As always, don't forget to follow me on Instagram to chat and now let's get into this video. February 22, 1993, Epstein's shell company, the Zorro Trust, completed a purchase of lands in Stanley, New Mexico. The deal included rights to the lease on public lands, a total of 1,159 acres. The entire ranch, including a privately held land, totaled nearly 8,000 acres. Epstein began constructing a stable, detached garages and homes in 1994 and began building his mansion in 1999. Including porches and patios, the mansion came to 57,420 square feet. This property had so much space that Epstein had built the airstrip on privately held portion of the ranch. The ranch is surrounded on nearly all sides by land and featured a privately secured gate for the property. The home featured guest homes, arched pillars, and courtyards leading to other wings, as well as an abundance of indoor to outdoor flow with large glass sliding doors and oversized windows. In addition, the home was decked out with an abundance of custom fixtures, elegant chandeliers, renaissance decor, and unique 
antiques, which will continue to be a theme throughout this house tour. His former mansion featured its own indoor swimming pool that came complete with a jacuzzi and shower area. While the photos by now look outdated, you can tell just how massive this property was. And honestly, knowing what type of guy he is, even seeing the photos gives me an eerie vibe of the place. Moving on to Florida, shortly after Epstein's death, his Palm Beach home was demolished. Palm Beach is a popular getaway in the Sunshine State, separated from the mainland by the Lake Worth Lagoon. It's known for its glitzy estates, much like this one, and its beaches, including the long sandy Palm Beach itself. Epstein's former home was purchased by Florida real estate developer Todd Michael Glazier, and he tore it down to make way for a 14,000 square foot art modern home. Glazier and his partners reportedly paid $18 million for the Epstein home, a $4 million discount from its original listing price of $22 million. This home was built in 1950 and purchased by Epstein in 1990 for $2.5 million. The 14,000 square foot property boasted six bedrooms, 7.5 bathrooms, a separate staff house with three bedrooms, and a pool house. The property featured roughly 170 feet of water frontage on the intercoastal waterway, with spades for a dock and views of Tarpon and Everglades Islands, as well as a massive pool that had a patio space all around it to relax and soak up the sun. This mansion was also the site of a raid back in 2008, which led to Epstein's indictment on prostitution charges. In addition, he allegedly enticed and recruited underage girls to the property to engage in inappropriate acts. Among the items authorities found in the house during the raid were framed nude photos, sex toys, soap shaped like genitalia, and massage tables. Honestly, after that disturbing news, I think we've heard enough about this place. While Epstein had spent his final years on his private island in the Virgin Islands, which has been coined Pedophile Island, his most expensive real estate purchase was actually in New York. His New York mansion has been described as the largest private residence in Manhattan, and once you hear how big it was, it makes sense. This estate features a whopping 50,000 square foot, nine story mansion that is worth at least $77 million to upwards of $88 million today. A spacious abode, this home featured over 40 rooms throughout the mansion. The Herbert N. Strauss Mansion was the last and largest of just a handful of mammoth mansions built during its era in the 1930s and became the wealthiest and most prominent block of all New York City. Good luck finding that space in the city nowadays. Built as New York City's largest and most luxurious French neoclassical mansion on a 50 foot wide by 102.2 foot deep lot and nine stories high, some of this property's luxuries include 15 foot tall oak entry doors, imported French limestone decorated with detailed carvings, sculpture figures, and ornamental iron works. The home was decked out with an abundance of custom fixtures, elegant chandeliers, more Renaissance decor, and a terrific New York City views. In addition, the apartment even featured heated sidewalks to melt snow during those frigid New York City winters. Like most of Epstein's properties that were raided, this home was no different and featured many bizarre and disturbing details, which included a wall of fame. In Epstein's study, the walls and table are covered with pictures of famous and infamous people, including faces like Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman and Bill Clinton. Epstein possesses a mural depicting a photorealistic prison scene that included barbed wire, corrections officers, and a guard station with Mr. Epstein portrayed in the middle. This is likely a reference to the 18-month jail sentence Epstein served, but only 13 months of it as part of a 2008 plea deal that allowed him to avoid federal charges and potentially a lifetime of imprisonment. Another disturbing feature was Epstein's life-size female doll hanging from a chandelier. The entrance hall was definitely decorated with row upon row of individually framed eyeballs imported from England. At the bottom of a staircase, Epstein had a human chessboard. Each of its customized figurines is modeled after one of his staffers and dressed suggestively. In Epstein's study, he also had a stuffed black poodle situated atop a grand piano, and Epstein reportedly pointed it out to visitors, telling them, no decorator would ever tell you to do that, but I want people to think about what it means to stuff a dog. In addition, Epstein had a large stuffed tiger in his office. Epstein was also a collector of eccentric art. Aside from his portrait of Bill Clinton in a dress, he owned a rare painting worth almost six million dollars. This painting featured a young woman cupping her exposed left breast hanging behind Epstein's desk. 
After all that weirdness, I think we've seen enough, and I'm gonna bring this Jeffrey Epstein houser to an end right there. We briefly looked at a few of his properties, like his mega ranch in New Mexico and his Palm Beach and New York City mansions. Finally, very little is known about Jeffrey's apartment in Paris. Of course, French police have also searched this former apartment of Epstein, but all we know about it is it's reportedly a luxury flat somewhere on Avenue Fop in an exclusive neighborhood near the Arc de Triomphe, and he stayed here during his frequent stints to Paris. After looking at this creepy man and his creepy former properties, what did you guys think? I think this was one horrifying house tour, that's for sure. After Epstein's graphic crimes came to light, so did his vast real estate portfolio and the properties where he committed them. And his decorating taste was super disturbing. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. As for his island, well, we're saving that for its own tour altogether, so stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and tell me whose house tours you want to see next. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!